All right, just a quick primer for this video. A neural net for the purpose of this video is something that takes in inputs and spits out outputs. So in this case, it's going to take in the position of the plane, the angle of the control surfaces on the wings and stuff, and it's going to spit out um, what needs to be done to fly the plane. So how to angle the rudder and the flaps and all those other control surfaces and how to throttle up and throttle down. Reinforcement learning is a way to generate a neural network by generating a randomized neural network and evaluating its performance based on some type of reinforcement, either a reward or a punishment, and then depending on which, whichever randomly generated neural network gets a higher reward, you keep that one and then it's kind of like evolution, you know, that one gets to go on to the next generation and then you mutate it a little bit and you keep doing this over and over until these networks start to get closer and closer to an optimal solution. So anyways, if you have no idea what these are, this is just like a basic completely wrong explanation for the purposes of this video. All right, let's go. After I finished the first couple tutorials for uh, the Unity machine learning package, I didn't really know what to do. There wasn't a whole lot of interesting stuff out there. So I figured a cool application would be something in like a really dynamic uh, world, right? Like flying a plane, you know, drone control and stuff like that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I went through the process of trying to get a plane to land. This is me landing the plane. Um, this is a like, airplane simulation package that I downloaded, or not a package, a project I downloaded from Y485. He's going to be in the description, but all right, let's go. First thing to do is just set up the training scenario. So I make it so that whenever this plane touches the ground or goes out of bounds, I want it to reset from all of its initial parameters. So here it is. There's no training plugged into it at all. It's just falling and then resetting over and over and over. I very quickly learned what happens if you don't have the right size of input vector. As you can see, I'm getting a lot of not a number floating point errors, so that wasn't any good. After I got that, I just set a basic reward, uh, try and stay in the air for as long as possible. And so after a few dozen generations, it finally started figuring out how to fly for longer than a few seconds. The next step was to add a whole bunch of different agents with different conditions so that the training could be accelerated. Unfortunately, they kept crashing into these little pillars because I didn't give them any way to detect anything. So then I added raycasts. After about a uh, half a million time steps, I decided it was enough training for it to fly sufficiently. But I think is interesting is if you look at the control surfaces, you'll notice that the movements that it does are really like small and it's it's just these little bitty taps, right? It reminds me almost more of like a kestrel hovering or like a bird in flight rather than a human controller. Okay, so after the model learned how to fly, I decided it was time to start training it on how to land. Um, the first issue was it immediately did not want to fly anywhere in the vicinity of the landing strip. So I had to create an upper bounds and some X and Z bounds as well. So initially, uh, all I really did was define that the plane should fly lower and fly slower, and then I would give it a bonus if it touched down onto the runway. So the first few landings looked like this, and then the plane immediately took back off again. So I ended up doing by hand on accident what is called uh, curriculum learning, and I guess that Unity already ships with this, the ML Agents package does, where you start with easy concepts and begin introducing harder and harder concepts. Uh, I'm definitely going to use the built-in version of that next time I work on my next project. Picking rewards properly is also very important because since I just told the airplanes to fly low and slow, they actually found that they could get more reward by flying until they reached the edge of the map for as long as possible. So here you see that the planes kind of figure out that they can slow down more quickly if they just dive bomb into the ground. So what I need to do is make sure that their roll isn't too high so they're not upside down and that they have to touch down at a certain speed, otherwise we consider that a crash. Here you can see that the plane is actually able to land uh, without activating the end episode function because my collider was too small. So it can just ride along the ground like this. And I think it, the way that I had it set up, it actually got more points from doing this than it did from landing on the runway. The network started running out of space on my SSD, so I transferred it to my hard drive and 
I deleted my config file, so I went to go get a new one off the internet, and I realized that that config file was using the wrong type of network. So here's what happened when I wasn't using the right network. Yeah, it was great results. So that training session ended up going a little bit better, but for some reason the planes just would not land on the runway, and I couldn't figure out why. I adjusted some parameters, and the planes decided they would start landing on the runway, but this time, because I only limited the roll parameter, they decided that they would roll upside down and then flip right side up at the last minute. So that way, they would technically be landing with zero roll. So I realized I was going to have to restrict their rotation in the x-axis. I also realized that it wasn't really possible to land because the even if you throttle down to zero, the plane would still keep going. So I had to make a modification that if you touch the runway, it would increase the drag of the rigid body so that you could slow down naturally. I think that that's actually why the planes were dive bombing is because if they could dive bomb and pull up at the last second, they could completely neutralize their speed and that would give them the big, giant, huge bonus that you got for coming to a complete stop. So after I fixed that and got the reward system set up differently, things start going a lot better. This is only the 300,000th time step of training, and as you can see, the success rate for this specific plane is already pretty high. I had the planes organized. Um, there were 27 of them in a big cube, and the idea is that that way, as long as your starting condition is within that cube, if you have this uh, brain plugged into your airplane, it will always be able to land. So here's what it looked like after about six million steps of that fourth uh, test. Um, this is sped up because my computer started lagging really bad, but you can see that the success rate is much, much higher. So here's that exported neural net flying the plane by itself. Uh, I put it in a randomized position inside of that cube, so it didn't have one of the initial spots that the original 27 planes were in, but as you can see, it still manages to course correct and land. Um, it's not exactly straight, but I didn't, you know, give it a reason to learn how to land right on the dead center of the runway, so. Here's a side-by-side -side of me and the AI just for comparison. I thought it would be kind of interesting. You can see how much more finicky the AI is when it controls the plane. Um, I realize that this video wasn't meant to be, like, you know, comprehensive thing. It's just, this is my first foray into this, so I wanted to kind of document that experience. As I get better at it, I might start making tutorials. Um, I already have a few more ideas. I think I'm gonna train an airplane to start dropping bombs uh, and use some of the techniques like uh, curriculum learning and demonstration learning and uh, curiosity and stuff. So hopefully I can make more of these videos in the future because this was pretty fun actually. So thanks for watching.